What's up everybody, welcome to the video. We're back to the Lone Star State as we take on the long name 400 at Texas Motor Speedway. This will take place on Sunday, April 14th, around 3 p.m. Eastern. And this will be a nice change of pace after the past couple of weeks as we had back-to-back -back short tracks. And as you all know, in the next gen car, short tracks tend to be a bit of a snoozer. And we saw that at Martinsville and we pretty much saw that at Richmond as well. So mile and a half tracks have been pretty good in this car. So I know Texas is not really what you think of as being an exciting track, but hopefully it's a little bit better than what we saw the past two weeks. Anyway, this happens to be your first time here. What's up? My name is Chris Pinnell. I break down NASCAR DFS each and every single week on this channel. Videos on Saturdays, live streams on Sundays, planning for around noon or 1 p.m. Eastern, so be there or be square. And really quick, I gave a shout out to my man Cubert Rules for picking William Byron last week, who made him the winner of the comment contest because he was the only one that picked him. So if you want to win this weekend, all you got to do is comment down below who you think is going to score the most fancy points and how many, and the winner will get a cash prize. And if you do enjoy today's video, make sure you would like down below, subscribe to the channel for brand new, and let's dive right into it. All right, so let's talk some strategy here for Texas, and it's nothing too out of the ordinary. It's your cookie cutter classic 1.5 mile intermediate track where you pretty much just want two dominators and you fill in the rest. We have 267 laps, which equates to just under 190 total dominator points. And at these intermediate type tracks, we kind of see the same guys pop their heads in every single time. It's a combination of either Kyle Larson, William Byron, or Denny Hamlin. Also, Tyler Reddick's no slouch either. I wouldn't say he's in the big three, but he's like in the next tier of drivers like Christopher Bell, Ryan Blaney, and Martin Truex Jr., these track types. So I'm talking to future me because I record this before practice and qualifying, but I would not be surprised if the names I just mentioned back it up in practice and qualifying are the favorites once again. There are the favorites beforehand, but I feel like they'll back it up even more. And we already saw Kyle Larson be an absolute dominator at Las Vegas earlier in the season. Denny Hamm was also very good, even though he qualified poorly. And William Byron, if we did not have the trash bag issue, had one of the fastest cars, and Tyler Reddick almost contended for the win. So what do you know? The same names once again, even though it's a new year. And finally, moving on to the driver by driver breakdown, but I do mention one thing first, and that is, of course, if you want to join the community over on Patreon, I'd love to have you. We appreciate everyone that has signed up so far. But you can get access to all the extra content that I post over there in addition to whatever I do on YouTube. Access to the entire NASCAR model, projections for both sites, my cheat sheets, optimizer, ownership projections, the entire NASCAR betting model. Articles going over cash games, tournaments, bets, in my Discord community. And I do cover other sports as well, including the Xfinity series and trucks and baseball every single day. So if that's something you're interested in, you know where to find it. Link can be found down below. And compared to everybody else, my prices are very fair in the industry. And as you all know, I'm a partner with Stochastic and they did launch their NASCAR Sims still and updated the website a little bit. So it looks a little bit more sleek. But if you want to check it out, you can help find which drivers and lineups are the most optimal and give you the best return on investment beforehand using their pre-contest simulator. You can upload my projections if you want, use your own or use theirs already on the site and see which lineups are looking the best stacking up in tournaments. If you want to check it out, you can use the link down below in the description and tell them I sent you. All right, so it's the next day in practice and qualifying just concluded as we had a very early session at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. And I wouldn't say we had really too many surprises. A couple guys didn't get to make qualifying laps due to wrecking in practice. That would be Kyle Busch starting in 35th. Then we have old man Jimmy Johnson down there in 37th as well. And if we're looking at practice, obviously it's staggered every single week. Although it didn't look like one group had a major advantage. I do have group A highlighted in yellow. And as you can see, it's pretty littered throughout the group here. Maybe they're just slightly faster overall, but I don't really think so. I mean, we have the guy in group two, top everybody in practice. So I think we can kind of just look at it as is. But if you want to sort it by groups, you certainly can, but I'm not going to make it a big deal this weekend. But as you can see, Kyle Larson does look like the top dog once again this weekend. So they'll start with the five figure and up range. And we're going to start off with the man, Kyle Larson, the most expensive on both sides. He qualified in the poll. He was the odds on favorite to win this race. Just dominated. The, well, not just dominated, but dominated the only other intermediate track we have been to this year at Las Vegas. Absolutely crushed it and won. Held up Tyler Reddick at the end to win. And top three across the board in practice. And if we look at the 11 race sample size here at Next Gen Large Ovals, Larson, obviously very good. The most dominant points. And if you expand that since 2022, once again, the absolute man. So if you are playing cash games, you're starting with him in, in tournaments. I'm still fine being overweight on him. Just really hard not to play Cal Larson here. William Byron, his teammate, 10-8 on DraftKings, really kind of cheap over on Fandle. Not like cheap, but like compared to, I think he should probably be the second most expensive. And the fact that he's not just makes him seem a little bit cheap. He's going to be starting in six. Wasn't as fast in one lap in practice, but his lap, lap averages longer in the run. Fifth and five, fourth and the 10, fourth and the 15. Looks pretty good to me. He was very fast at Las Vegas, got up front for a little bit, but don't forget he had that big trash bag on his grill, almost killed his day, ended up coming back. So the result probably wasn't as good as it should have been, but he had one of the best cars. and just over on the next gen at large intermediates. Tends to be very good at these. So I don't think he's going to be as fast as Kyle Larson, but if they were running one, two, I wouldn't be overly surprised about it. So I would say he's the tournament option. Kyle Larson is more of the cash game option. 
Denny Hamlin, 10,500 bucks. He's going to be starting at 11th. I feel like he has very similar upside to these two, but I think his chances of getting up front are just slightly less, so I'd have to put him in a tier below those guys, but he does offer a little bit more place differential. It's an elite play. Pretty much everybody in the 10K and up range, they're expensive for a reason. They're going to be a good play, but I would say the 200 guys up top are going to be 1-2, and then guys like Hamlin Raddick will be in tier 2. I'd probably have Blaney in tier 3 if I had to tier those guys off, just because I don't think Ford's going to be as strong as Chevy and Toyota, because they just tend to not be. At these track types, I know Danny wasn't super impressive in practice and wasn't obviously the best in qualifying, but he's just the guy that ends up figuring it out as the day goes on. Ryan Blaney, like I said, he's probably my least favorite of this bunch. He tends to be the fastest forward at these intermediate tracks week in, week out. But I just don't think he's going to be able to get up front and dominate. So while I don't think he's a complete fade, he's definitely a lot lower in the total pool than the rest. Then Tyler Reddick, I love him here. He's 10000 bucks, which kind of seems expensive for him, but he's great at intermediate tracks. Like I said earlier in the strategy portion, I wouldn't put him quite in the big three of Larson, Byron, Hamlin. He's kind of in the next tier, but honestly, he looks great for this race. He was seventh in the one lap, but if you look at the lap averages, first in the 10 laps, second in the 15, and not as many guys are in 20 lap averages, but still very fast. And as you can see, the intermediate tracks in the next gen era has been extremely good here, and he has won at Texas before, so I would put him in that tournament category. I mean, Larson's going to be your starting point. That eats up a large chunk of salary, but I think he's right there with William Byron as being the next guy up that could dominate if it's not Kyle Larson. Then dropping down to the 9K range with Martin Truex Jr. 9700 bucks. He's going to be starting in ninth. Kind of just seems like a guy that I'm going to have a hard time getting to a ton of. I think he can run well, but running well isn't exactly what you need at $9,700. Like, we can find guys that can run well in the 8K range. We need guys that can dominate. And if I'm going to be so heavy on guys like Larson or just really two of these guys, I will. I would say it's most likely I'll have two of the 10K guys and up in the majority of my laps because we're going to need two dominators per build. I'm not going to guarantee that I have to run projections still ownership projections and have the more updated thoughts on the patreon in the live stream tomorrow which is gonna be hard to fit in a ton of nk guys especially when you have kyle bush down here at nine thousand bucks who's starting all the way back in 35th you have chase elliott in 24 so i feel like it's not going to be easy to get too much of truex he wasn't overly impressive in practice either he's one of those guys that don't usually care too much about practice because you know he's an old vet they tend to figure it out and he's been good at intermediates i just don't think he's going to be able to dominate per se chris Bell, 9500 bucks he's starting in third Again, like he's starting in the top five, but there's so many other good cars starting in the top five, like Kyle Larson. I mean, Byron's almost there. Tyler Reddick. So I don't really see Chris Rowe dominating. I think he runs well, like Martin Truex Jr., but at these prices, you're going to need them to get some dominator points. I'm not exactly sure we're going to see that out of Chris Bell. So he'll be lower my exposures. Chase Elliott, just a little bit easier to get to, I think. Practices kind of jumping around. 15th in one lap, then third in the five, then 21st in the 10, 13th in the 15. I think he'll be able to move up. Chase. I feel like everyone thinks he's washed at this point, but he has been getting better this season. Has been running well, almost won the race. Lastly, but William Byron just ended up destroying everybody at the end. But I think Chase is a really solid place differential play. So if you want to play him in cash games, sure. But I think Kyle Busch will probably be the preferred option starting 11 spots further back from 35th. Rosh Tastain starting in 12th. We like him at the intermediate tracks. He'll be a good tournament option because everyone's going to go to Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch in this range. And... I'm not going to say Rosh Chastain is going to dominate, but he has been very good at these track types. As you can see, an 11 race sample size since last year, outshined 10.6, which is tied for the second best with William Byron only behind Denny Hamlin. Five top fives and overall just runs very well. So I would have some slight interest in Rosh Chastain for tournaments. And Kyle Busch, direct in practice. Obviously, I don't think he's going to be a race winning contender, but at that price point, especially on Fandle, almost feels like a free play over there. He should be able to move up. I know we've been fading him at the short flat tracks recently which it has worked out but the intermediates have been a lot better to rcr so i'm fine with him in cash games and the ak range also has some very interesting plays starting off with joey Logano starting in 20th i don't typically like the fords too much at these tracks but they didn't look too bad in practice ninth in the one lap for Logano, six in the five and third in the ten so it looks like he's gonna have some speed his teammate ryan blaney looked pretty solid on fan he's really cheap 8500 bucks like he's not the same exact play as kyle bush because he starts 15 spots further up but he's kind of in that same category as a, just a Cheaper place differential play with top 10 potential. So I'm fine with Joey here. Bubba Wallace would be a nice pivot off of both of these guys in tournaments. Led over 100 laps here at Texas last season. Wasn't extremely strong in practice firing off, but the lap averages look better. Ninth in the 10 and 6 in the 15. And we typically like Bubba Wallace at these intermediate tracks. As you can see, some of the not best overall numbers, but really solid. 14.5 average finish, running position of 13.3, four top fives, five top tens, and some dominator points mixed in there. So he's a GPP play only, wouldn't get there in cash games. Logano and Kyle Busch would be much safer, but if you're looking to get off some of the ownership for a guy that I won't say is going to dominate this race, but has the slight potential for it, Wallace would be your guy. And Ty Gibbs, same kind of thing where 
yes, he has slight dominator potential, but for where he is starting, it's going to make his day pretty rough. Like he's got to be perfect to be optimal here. But if he can run top five, still fast laps, that's the path for him. But it's going to be hard to get there. Like, I, again, I don't know how my projections are going to stack out. I will give him some dominator upside, and he was fast in practice firing off. First in the one, second in the five. But to be able to beat out Kyle Larson, that's going to be very tough, and you're going to have some other guys moving through the field as well. And so I think Gibbs can be a top five, top eight kind of guy, which at his price point, that's doable if he can steal fast laps. But again, it's going to be a tough path to be optimal here. Alex Bowman starting in 14th, kind of in that same range as Bubba Wallace. But I would prefer Bubba just because I has a better shot of picking up some dominator points. But I wouldn't say they're going to be too far off in projections. Brett Koslowski is pretty cheap. I would say he's kind of like the same exact play as Joey Logano. Logano looked faster in practice, but a lot of these times Brad just does not put up the best practices and they can tend to figure it out. And I say that just because he's 31st in the five lap, but he was second in the first lap. So, I mean, I think he's going to have some speed to be able to move up. Him and Chris Buescher kind of had the same thing where they had a really strong one lap and then just the five and 10 lap runs just weren't that pretty. But for where they're starting, they should be able to move up. If you're looking at Keslowski. His numbers, 11 race sample size, average finish of 13th, running position of 12th, and 10 top 20s in 11 race sample size. So I don't really have concerns about Keselowski moving up. Uh, both him and Chris Buescher, I would say, will project pretty similar, but I could see Keselowski edging him out in projection just a little bit. Dropping down to the 7K range, not too many guys here. It's usually an SHR party, but it looks like it got broken up. If Chase Briscoe starting in 5th, that's going to be too high for me. I, I just don't see myself getting there. Noah Gregson starting in 21st, very fast at Vegas, 16th in the 5, 10th in the 10 lap. And 7th to 15. If I had to pick between those two SHR cars, I would take Noah Gregson for sure. Daniel Suarez starting in 17th. Looks like he's got some speed this weekend. And if you're looking ahead at his numbers since 2023 in the large ovals, not too bad. Trackhouse tends to have some speed at these track types. 9 top 20s, 7 top 15s. And like if we look at the practice numbers, 10th, 6th, and 3rd. So I could be in on Daniel Suarez. Not sure the ownership will be super high because it's kind of a weird price range. I feel like if people are trying to get a couple of these guys up top, maybe they just won't get to the 7K range too much. Then Noah Gregson, after his amazing run at Las Vegas, maybe Daniel Suarez gets forgotten about a little bit, but I do like the practice speeds we saw. Eric Jones in 27th should be like a fringe top 20 guy, but I'm not expecting fireworks here. Tends to be better at these larger ovals. Running position of 17, seven top 20s, like he's fine. If you need to play stiff differential guy, I don't hate Eric Jones, but I do like the speed I saw out of Daniel Suarez a little bit more and Noah Gregson. I'm just eyeballing here, the 6K range looks a little bit awkward. Josh Berry starting in 25th. I usually like him just at short tracks. But looking at his practice times, they don't look terrible. 11th in the one lap, 24th in the five, 14th in the 10, and 11th in the 15. And I believe we had 30 guys run 10 lap averages. So top half of the board right there. I'm trying to see what group he was in. It was in the second group as well, which I'm not, again, I'm not really sure it's going to matter too much, but it does look decent. So I think Josh Berry is in play. Looks a little bit faster than Eric Jones and pretty much the same starting spot. Jimmy Johnson might end up being popular. I'm going to probably struggle trying to figure out his ownership. He's going to be starting second to last year, only in front of Daniel Hemrick. And I know everyone sees the name Jimmy Johnson. If this was 10 years ago, sure, we'd be all about it. But I'm just worried the old man, you know, obviously he's washed at this point. Not in the greatest equipment. Doesn't have Chad Knauss in the 48 car these days. And he definitely has stated his struggles. So 34th in practice before he ended up dying out. Didn't get any five or 10 lap runs in practice. I, I don't think he's going to be great. He'll probably end up being pretty slow and we do have a one race sample size for him here and did finish 37th running position of 35th i feel like every race he has done he has wrecked out at some point and i had to look back but I, I feel like he probably ended up wrecking out <laughs> during this race and i believe yeah that's all we have just one race sample size out of jimmy so i am not gonna say like oh yeah we have to lock jimmy johnson in cash games because he can only move up sure he'll probably move up a little bit but i'm not sure how much it's gonna be so the jury is still out on on jimmy i don't i think there's certainly better plays John Hunter Nemechek, his teammate, starting in 30th, 29th, 23rd, 26th, 17th in practice. Should be able to gain a couple of spots, but I don't think it's going to be a master class by John Hunter Nemechek by any means. Looking at his two race sample size here, you have an average of 27th, or I'm position of 27th. Like, yeah, I could probably see him being like a 25th place car. So not a ton of upside there, especially for the price. Austin Sendrick, I imagine, only moves back. Decent in practice, though, 14th in the one, 9th in the five lap, but starting a little bit too far up for me. And as you can see, 11 race sample size of these track types in the next gen era, pretty much a 20th place car. He has mixed in a couple top 15s and only one top 10, but more than likely we'll move back. Austin Dillon starting in 15th, the slower in practice. Large doubles for him haven't been terrible, seven top 20s and 11 race sample size, but for where he's starting, he can probably land around 15th to 20th, which, I mean, 
we can say that it's probably not going to be the greatest projection play, but once you scroll down here, there's just really not much that's going to stand out, I think, because it gets pretty ugly pretty quick. So I'm not going to write off Austin Dillon. If he can hold ground somewhat, that's doable. Michael McDowell starting in 13th, pretty quick in practice. 12th in the one lap, 7th to 5, and 7th to 10. You have to take a shot every time they show him wrecking out during qualifying because you're going to see that pretty much throughout the entire week. I know I have on Twitter. So the practice speeds look decent. He's another guy where, you know, if he can somewhat hold his ground, like it's not going to feel good playing them because there's obviously a lot to lose starting inside the top 15, but the speed's there. And Texas isn't exactly going to be the, I think the easiest track to pass. Obviously, the faster guys will be able to move, but this track position will be somewhat important. Ricky Snell Jr., a guy I think can move up top 20 in practice pretty much across the board. So it'll definitely feel a lot safer to play over guys like McDowell and Austin Dillon. Austin Hill. Look pretty slow. Was 20th in the 10 lap, though, which I will give him that because there was 30 guys that ran it in practice, but probably a guy that's going to be competing for a top 25, top 30. So just kind of in that Ricky Stenhouse range where you just have to hope they move up a little bit. But if I had to pick between the two, I think Ricky Stenhouse would be the one I prefer just because obviously more cup experience. And then the 5K range. And these are just pretty much guys you mix and match with your dominators and hope they survive the race. Although Carson Hosevar, I believe it was Las Vegas where he qualified pretty high in top 15. And then Zane Smith qualified poorly, but both are pretty fast in practice. So I win Zane Smith. He wrecks in lap five or something. And then Carson Josevar just ends up having a day. So I feel like we can see something similar here for Carson Josevar. Probably just hang around the top 15-ish majority of the day. So I would not write him off, even though he's starting decently high. Like, he actually does have some decent finishing position upside. And for a sample size frame of the next gen era, averaging position of 20th here with three top 20. So I really don't hate Josevar here. Corey LaJoy, similar numbers overall, seven top 20s, 11 race sample size. So I think he's in play. Looking at practice here, just a little bit slower, 23rd, 35th, and 25th. I feel like if it's tournaments, I am going to side with Josevar here, but we're just kind of grasping at straws here, splitting hairs, trying to figure out who to play down low. Ryan Priest was really slow. He's a short track master, but intermediates aren't exactly the best for him. Todd Gillen starting in 28th, practice better than that. He's a candidate to move up. Zane Smith, I mean, it's been a horrible, horrible season. Poor Zane, but practice with his teammate Carson Hosevar and or qualified, I should say, and the joy wasn't too far off. And he showed some speed in practice 18th, 15th, and 10th. Wasn't the first group, not really sure that's going to matter this week. So I can say Zane and Hosevar are probably very similar plays. Then Burton sucks. Haley doesn't suck, but his car sucks. I'd probably just finish right where he starts. Daniel Hemrick, extremely slow. Colleague sucks. I mean, yeah, I think I don't think he's going to finish dead last. I'm sure somebody's going to DNF. If it's not Hemrick, he could contend for a top 30, but can't really bank on that. Grala, slow, and Ty Dillon. Not as slow. I mean, he is min price. So if you're trying to fit in multiple of these guys up top, if you just have to throw in Ty Dillon at the end, I get it, but it's not like someone you're going away, you're going out of your way for to fit in. But that being said, that's all I got for you guys this week. So I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you have a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. If you want to enter the comment contest, just tell me who you think is going to score the most fantasy points and how many. Just leave that comment down below before the race starts, and the winner will get a cash prize. If you want to check out all the extra content over on Patreon, you'll know to find it. Link can be found down below. Hopefully, I'll see you all on the live stream tomorrow around 1 p.m. Eastern. I wish you all the best.